Now, I'm here because I see a great folly, a desecration, a desecration about to be committed. I heard about the High Moselle Bridge so many years ago that I honestly forgot about it. I thought that it was a folly of the 1960s and 70s which had gone the way of follies in history, that it would never come back again. I never expected to see the government commit such a folly and desecration and to see it take such physical form as an assault on some of the most pre precious and prestigious vineyards, not just in the region, not just in Germany, but in the entire wine world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've come here on a perfect evening to admire this magnificent viaduct, starting here and going over there. Doesn't it look wonderful? This, ladies and gentlemen, is just a highway on stilts. There is nothing beautiful, interesting, dramatic or romantic about it except its enormous size. There are beautiful bridges, and I'm not a person who just says bridges are horrible. There is a wonderful new viaduct in France over the town gorge an essential road because it connects the north and south of France and forms a really important road to Spain, avoiding the Rhone Valley. Well, look at this one. As I say, it's just a road on stilts. And another point, anyone who imagines that it's going to bring some kind of prosperity, this new prosperity to Erzig and this valley, is dreaming. Are the tourists going to jump off on parachutes? Why would they stop? They'll be going at a hundred and something kilometers an hour. They will just go, making the most appalling noise. You will never not hear traffic in this valley again if this bridge is built. But much more interesting than this road idea is this amazing valley. What I really want to talk about is this historic landscape this unique culture and the craftsmanship which over centuries has interpreted mountain slopes as beautiful flavors which are sought all over the world. Perhaps those who live here are too close to it to see it. You can't even value your own uh, wines uh, as much as foreigners can. I can tell you that the whole world has nothing comparable to Mosul Riesling. You can imitate the wine of Bordeaux in the Napa Valley. You can even imitate the wine of Burgundy in certain places. But there is nothing that even starts to imitate great Mosul Riesling. The wines of the New World, characterized by high alcohol, they're heavy wines, they're difficult to drink, and they are going out of fashion. Everybody agrees that this is not what wine should be. This is the greatest opportunity the Mosul has ever had for its unique style of intensity with lightness. Nobody's looking for alcohol anymore. You can slug vodka. This is a great opportunity and it has been made easier, I must admit, by global warming in, in recent vintages and presumably in the future. But do you really know what a treasure this inheritance is? I'm not talking about nostalgia and middle-aged tourists. I'm talking about the future and the young. The future is always with the young and people who have the energy and the determination to cultivate really difficult country like this mountain vineyard. It has to be precious because nobody else is doing it. Strangely enough, in the Wachau in Austria, they're doing difficult stuff like this and they are appreciating it and they're selling it for high prices and the world is buying it. I'm sorry to say the Moselle is not standing up for itself in the same way. The politicians in Mainz, in Berlin, in Brussels, collect your money and my money as taxes. They've got rather a lot of it and they're going to spend it and should they be spending it on roads 
so that pe people from Belgium can hurry their goods to harm to be shipped off to some part of the world? Or should they be concentrating on what is unique here, a culture which will never be replaced? There's no way. When this valley is brought down and banalized by a lousy road, how is it going to have the self-respect? How is it going to feel so special? Why is anyone going to want to come and taste its unique produce? Hello, Quebec. I'm very glad you could come along to discuss this matter with us this evening. <laughs> you have the example of Dresden as a very recent and obvious one. What happens to people who build a bridge too far? We can't stop it, just this little crowd here. But the fact that <laughs> the fact that you are here is a start, and you must represent this point of view to everybody. You must tell your neighbours that the fight is not over until it's been fought. Roads have been stopped before. There are bridges going from nowhere to nowhere, including in Germany, but not here. I leave you with this fascinating picture of this beautiful landscape and this great shadow of uselessness flying overhead. Thank you very much. <laughs>